Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video, we're going to react to British blizzards have got nothing on America. Now, it's been absolutely freezing recently. Like, but when I actually look at the temperatures, so it, it, it got as cold as minus four recently, which was, for me, that's super cold. I'm sure there's Americans that are laughing at this thinking, Kabir, minus four, that's nothing. I mean, minus four uh, centigrade, which is probably, what, minus seven, minus eight Fahrenheit. For me, that's really cold, really, really windy. Like it was super windy last night. But I guess America, because it's so much bigger and you've got more flat spaces, your wind speeds are probably going to be a lot worse because, you know, here it's really hilly. So that breaks up the wind and stuff. So, yeah, who better than Lawrence from Lost in the Pond to kind of, you know, lay down the law, tell us just how serious American blizzards are. Well, it's that time of year again when America becomes a desolate hellscape. And as of five minutes ago, my weather alerts are saying that there's a blizzard heading straight for Chicago. Wait, uh -oh. no, five hours ago. But back when I lived in Britain, a blizzard was a bit like the census. You only had to worry about it once every 10 years. In Chicago, I'm already on my fourth blizzard in eight, and that excludes trips wow. to Dairy Queen. I'm Lawrence, and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and, yeah, America, Britain and America lost in the lost pond. In the and pond. one of those memos pertains to buzzards. Blizzards. <laughs> And since you are likely snowed in yourself, why not begin your new binge? If you haven't yet subscribed to this channel, do that now. In the meantime, allow me to give you insight into North American blizzards while simulating one. It's the best I could do at such short notice. The truth is, while winters are generally getting less severe in the Windy City, I still consider blizzards a staple of Midwestern winters. It's perhaps fitting then that the very word blizzard skyrocketed in use following one particular Midwestern season. The hard winter of 1880 to 1881. And if you think I'm being hyperbolic, that's literally what the event identifies as on Wikipedia. Basically, the Great Plains, which the Census Bureau somehow defines as Midwestern, endured a winter storm that continued on and off for Six months. I bet Laura Ingalls Wilder's parents were like, I hope you're taking six notes. Months. And she was. The storm was so bad that Wilder recalled it 60 years later in her book, The Long Winter. But whether it was long or hard, it was extremely cold, to the extent that none of the men felt comfortable making sex jokes out of this sentence. Sections of the Transcontinental Railroad were completely buried. Oh Even Francis Bourgeois would have been mad about that. As Wilder herself wrote in The Long Winter, Railroads, they're good to have, but the trouble is, folks get to depend on them. Some more than others, many set up their lives within reach of the railroad in order to receive critical shipments. During the hard winter, those very often never came. Oh my God. <laughs> Clearly in 20... Six months of a blizzard is just insane. Like, ugh. I mean, because there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do, really, apart from just adjust to it. Four blizzards aren't the same problem they once were, especially since I have central heating and a Prius. But as somebody who grew up in the Seattle of Europe, Midwestern blizzards are still a shock to the system. Firstly, they bring a lot of snow in a very short space of time. Secondly, you receive weather alerts that are so poorly formatted it looks like the storm hit them. And after reading it for the seventh time, I managed to glean the following information. Number one, there will be heavy snow. I think we got that memo. Number two, travel could be very very difficult to impossible which is all good yeah they actually told people unless you absolutely need to drive like they said just don't drive like last weekend because the winds were ridiculous i think like 90 mile an hour winds a note while sipping coffee in the comfort of your new studio less so when your home is 100 miles away and you're sitting in the passenger seat of a prius but that Slow is what happened to down. me and my wife in northern Indiana exactly a few years ago, approximately. We had taken a once-in-a-lifetime vacation to the bountiful kingdom of Indianapolis. By then, nothing more than a snow-covered dystopia. After our stay came and went, we braved the snow, still relatively light at this point, and headed back to Chicago. All seemed to be going well until we pulled into a McDonald's, which is where my problems always seem to start. And as I bit into my filet fish something didn't feel right. Mm. And I'm not just talking Love about... 
phone. Fish. A poorly formatted alert entered my inbox bearing the words, travel could be very difficult to impossible. And at that very moment, almost as if I'd embellished the timing of it to move the story along, the snow went completely and utterly a little bit silly. The cars in front became invisible, which between that and the slippery roads probably accounted for several accidents. Thankfully, we were not among them. As traffic slowed down to a crawl, or in some cases a slide, we found ourselves having to make a decision. Press on to Chicago. There's nothing worse than sliding in your car on the road, like losing control of it. It's terrifying, Te especially if there's other cars nearby. Ooh knowing we wouldn't be home until June or pull over and wait out the storm at Denny's. We did the latter, even if our server Debbie wasn't happy that I'd snuck in McNuggets. One hour and 1246 calories later, the snow halted and we slowly made our way home. Until today, I'd not told anybody that story, except for Debbie, who offered her sympathies in no way whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> of course, snow yeah, isn't even the worst part of a blizzard. The worst part about blizzards is the use of the word snowmageddon by American news anchors. But it's also the wind. Because something that I didn't tell you about today's poorly formatted weather alert is that it predicted that the wind would reach 45 miles per hour. Whether or not this was accurate doesn't matter because once the winds exceed 25, your face begins to hate you. Between the snow, the wind, and concerned calls from my Aunt Cynthia, it's easy to forget the most exciting part. The degree to which the snow settles. And when I say most exciting part, I'm really paraphrasing my dog Arthur, who is under the mistaken belief that all of this is the greatest thing that has ever happened. What he doesn't know is He's that so it's happy. us humans it's who so have to excited. deal with the fallout. Whether it's shoveling off the balcony over concerns it may collapse into the mudroom below. I've just realised that I've been dropping all of this snow onto our outdoor grill. Or remembering the exact location of ankle-breaking potholes that this adorable little f created. Or figuring out a plan for when all of this melts. Because something that I forgot to mention about the hard winter of 1881. Do people like still um, get people to plow their driveways? Like, you know, the Simpsons Mr. Plow episode. Like, do you pay people to plow your driveways in America or do you just do it yourself with a shovel? that much like the trains, it came to a grinding halt. Spring very suddenly brought about warm temperatures and the people most affected by the blizzards now had to contend with widespread flooding. So I just hope that Sunday isn't unseasonably warm, otherwise my basement might leak a little bit. I have good news and bad news. The good news is my basement's fine. The bad news is my basement is fine because it is minus nine degrees Fahrenheit outside. For context, that's nine degrees more frigid than London's coldest ever temperature. In Chicago, this is known as an annual tradition. And that brings me on to my own annual tradition, wow. which is to... Yeah, I've heard Chicago like is super windy. Don't they call it the Windy City? My audience that despite everything, I'm going to embrace winter this year. Well, that ends today. No more toxic positivity. No more, isn't snow fun? I've had it. Instead, I'm going to embrace misery. Cold, hard misery. Thanks for watching. <laughs> no, I'm being told we can't finish with that. Back to Lawrence in the audio booth. Thanks, Lawrence. Now, January might be the Satan of calendar months, but if those who experienced the hard winter of 1881 were still alive today, it would be a miracle because nobody lives that long. But if they were, they'd probably marvel at how far we've come in weather preparedness and how we in the 21st century take for granted electricity and heating systems because we've never known anything different and how the American office should it's have true. finished after Michael left. I mean, that's got nothing to do with this, but they would think that. Anyway, for the first time in as many days, I'm sitting here in my basement hiding from sub-zero temperatures. If you are doing the same thing or happen to be impacted by the big freeze, I raise an invisible glass to you and hope that we get through this the way that grown humans should, by just being sensible and wearing a coat. Thank you again to my patrons who never got to see me on- So has there been like a massive blizzard going through America? I, I, I genuinely did not know. Hopefully it's not caused massive disruption and, you know, I remember the, there was in Texas, wasn't there a um, the, the big freeze last year that took out loads of power? Like, has this one been as bad as that? Like, I really hope not because, you know, it's only when you lose electricity that you realize how your life is completely dependent on rel and reliant on it. But yeah, our blizzards, our weather in general here, although I will say in terms of heat, it's getting much hotter nowadays our cold temperatures probably don't get anywhere near as bad as they do in the States. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.